Hi everyone, I'm Sam Martino. Um, I, uh, just a bit about me, I run a video game studio uh, called Dogwood Gaming. Um, I try to submit uh, panels to MAGFest every year and I usually submit a bunch of development ones, but I always submit one about my absolute favorite video game, Steambot Chronicles, and they denied every panel this year except this one, which is the first time they ever accepted it. So, so thank you, thank you. So, so I'm so happy I get to talk about this. Um, I, I have a lot to go over because there's a lot here, but I also want to um, go over that I, um, I've been very fortunate that while working in the video game industry, I've gotten to run into a lot of people involved in this game, and it's led to my passion project on the side as I am trying to find out what happened to the IP rights and why they've gone missing. So I'll get into that later, but um, this is the best game ever made. This is the game that inspired me to want to make video games. It inspired me to want to play more video games. Um, it came out, I believe it was late 2005, uh, and I only found out about it because it was on the back of my Tips and Tricks magazine <laughs> from 2006. Um, and I, I had kept it because nobody ever played this game. <laughs> nobody, nobody ever played Steambot Chronicles. So nobody ever made any guides on how to do anything in the game. And it's, it's, a, it's a pretty in-depth RPG that also has like time-locked side events. <laughs> so you kind of need to know specifically when you have to do things. This is one of the only complete guides for Steambot Chronicles that was ever made. And then there's like one ASCII art amazing game, game FAQ online somewhere. <laughs> but that's about it. Um, there's so much. I think the best way to describe it is the tagline from the back. It is the first non-linear, customize your mech, band making, music playing, be a bad guy if you want, action adventure game in town. Um, and <laughs> it's, it, it, I, it really, like... For the time, I still am surprised at the things it was able to do. Like, I'll go into it in depth later, but it has a fully functional stock market that you can perform market manipulation to change prices and make a fortune off of it, which is one of my favorite things. But there's literally, like, there's one of the main side missions throughout the game is that you end up joining a band. This is, like, just part of the game. And you start with a harmonica, which you wash up on the shore with, but it then expands so you can play drums, piano, church organs, uh, three different kinds of guitars, including a side mission to create the first electric guitar, which you then also form the first modern rock band, which is also, like, a whole part of the game. And it's, it's one of those things that it's... It's broken up to try and they want you to experience everything throughout the game, but there's so much that it's really hard to get lost in it. And I feel like most people, when I show it to them or I've had friends borrow it because it's unfortunately very difficult to find it these days, most of them usually get through the first act and they're like, I've played 150 hours and I really haven't gotten anywhere. So, um, cause I mean, you can really accomplish so much of the game before you even reach like, the decision point where you've got to be a good guy or a bad guy. Um, but I, um, I don't know if this will work, so I don't know if we have audio, but I wanted to show the original uh, announcement trailer for it because a couple things with this, the production quality is interesting. <laughs> um, it was, but what's really interesting is it was published by Atlas, so the people that made Persona, but they, it was, this was before Persona 3 came out. I think this was about a year before Persona 3 came out. So I don't think Atlas was the mega company it is now. But uh, it's just interesting that this was the trailer they made for it. So we'll see if it works. Maybe. We're doing it live. We'll figure it out. Yeah, really. All right, well, of course we don't have audio, but this is a, this is, uh, I also say this is the best aspect ratio that was available for the, for the trailer. Um, and that also, I also want to state as I get deeper into this, a lot of the images that I'm using are either the only ones that exist or were provided by the one very tiny Discord community that still exists for this game and like post their screenshots. Um, it's, there's just so much to try and cover in a minute and 30 seconds, but it really, it's meant to be 
a action-based JRPG where you start with this very basic robot that they call Trotmobile, Trotmobiles that you are then able to fully customize to do whatever you want with them. It was essentially at the turn of the century, uh, we split historically where instead of going fully into cars, we decided that giant robots were the way to go for everything. So, <laughs> so, so like there's, there's farming mechs, there's plane mechs, there's like transport mechs, there's a bus mech, but you end up unlocking the bus mech because you can find a bus and you can take his bus and then throw it off a cliff and you just destroy the, the local bus industry. So it's, it's, it's great. Oh, there we go. Sorry, okay, that, that much, much better. Um, oh, sorry, I sound so much louder. That makes a huge difference. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, it, was, it was something that to me, I got, got in 2005, 2006, I was... 10, 11, <laughs> so it's like this was, this was a game that I like, I, I had a lot of free time and I put a ton of time into it, a lot of hours. I think on my main PS2 memory card I have like five different files with 200 plus hours on them of just, you know, just multiple playthroughs because you can do so much. Like, I mean, just the split in that if you want to be a good guy, that's a whole, that's like a whole path you can do. If you want to be a bad guy, that's its whole separate path. You can also switch in between the different paths and that will also change how everything affects and the characters you meet. And the new game plus that continues afterwards which also has the effects of everything that you've done in the original game. So there's, there's a lot of different things that can apply in this. Um, you can actually see in some of these, <laughs> um, the, the top right is a, is a story mode date that you go on with one of the band members later on, and she asks you for opinions on all of the band members, and that is an opinion you can give her. <laughs> that was straight to her, and I, I have to say, that was sent from someone in that Discord. In my thousand plus hours of the game, I've never seen that. I have never, ever seen that line of dialogue. I don't know how you get to it, but that's in the game. Um, I also, that was one of the first ones I saw, flowers suck, and for that you must burn. It's, <laughs> It's, it, it, all, all of the characters were really built to be so memorable. Um, I actually, uh, one of my favorite things I have from Steambot Chronicles is in Japan, they released a, a strategy guide for it, and it had all the concept art for all the characters. But what I found, but what I found really interesting with it was that they, there was so much detail in just nobodies. Like, literal nobodies have, like, all the intricate details in them, and they're, they're, you, you remember them. Um, something that I ended up taking when I was doing game development that I thought they did really well is that every single character on the street you can talk to. And every single one of them has a name and a job and a profession. And one of the craziest things to me is I think there's maybe, like, three, four, five hundred different NPCs, just, like, background people that, like, fill the streets. All, every single one of them will have different dialogue in New Game Plus that is an advancement from what they originally <laughs> told you in the first game. So, you know, it, and, and it's stuff like that that makes it so memorable. And I still go back and play these old save files because there's still things I find that I never knew about. And that's something of why I really want more people to play Steambot Chronicles is that it's a game that has a lot and a lot of people have barely scratched the surface of what it actually has. Um, one of the biggest things I've been trying to do and one of the hardest things I think in the game to accomplish is uh, there is a deed to a battleship that you can buy at the end of the game. It only becomes accessible in New Game Plus and it's one million dollars. I have manipulated the stock market, bought out every single company. There's a whole thing where you can like you meet an art dealer and you get him a job at a university, but then he gets accused of fraud. But if you sell, but if you buy back all of his paintings at that exact moment, you buy them for nothing, and then he gets his name cleared and they're worth a fortune when he dies. This is, this is a whole thing. And it's like, you do all of that. I hit $750,000. I've never gotten be it. That's where I'm currently at. That was months of trying to do it. And it's the only people that have done it have done it by like, you know, using a action replay and, and hacking in the money. So I don't think I've actually ever seen anybody legitimately buy this thing because it's so hard to hit that amount of money. Um, I can actually show you because this will go into, this will work out well for the point. This is the map, which I should note is impossible to read. <laughs> Absolutely impossible. None of it makes any sense and there's no directions for anything. And I can tell you that trying to decipher what any of this is, they built it around one thing. 
at the end of the game, your boss fight takes you through the river, uh, like the rivers of the entire map. So you start at one end, and the chase takes you through the entire river system. For some reason, that's what they built the entire map around. <laughs> so the only thing that makes any sense is the waterways, and you've got roads and highways that lead nowhere. I mean, I was playing it a couple weeks before this looking for stuff, and I found a map I had never been to before. <laughs> it was a zone I had never touched. It's not used for anything. And I'm just like, I, I don't understand why this was built the way it was. This actually has a good image of that concept art book I was talking about with the characters. Like, they put so much detail into everything. Um, and I mean, uh, the strategy guide's really funny because I'm not sure they were even sure who the main characters were at the point of making the strategy guide. Because, uh, I mean, I could tell you some of the characters they have focused on in the, the bottom appear in two cutscenes in the entire game. Um, and the guy at the bottom who's just friend, question mark. <laughs> so, you know, they, they were, um, I think they were really going, going by the sea of their pants here. Um, I actually, um, I was really fortunate that um, uh, in the back of the instruction manual for Steambot Chronicles, there's a note uh, from the guy who was the lead for doing the localization in the United States. His name's Tom, uh, Tom Hullett. He did, um, I think he did some of the more recent Silent Hill and Resident Evil games. I think he was one of their producers. But um, I reached out to him on LinkedIn, and he actually answered me, <laughs> actually responded to me. And um, I was talking to him about it, and he said that uh, they really didn't have very much time to do it. And there were, like, so many things they had half worked on that were just sitting there that they weren't able to put in when they released it. Um, and it sounds like they were trying to do a lot more for the sequel that never happened, um, but it's very clear that just looking through the game, there were a lot of concepts they wanted to build so much more on. Um, what to do is really, uh, <laughs> there's, there's uh, I could go on for hours. I mean, truly, it's, the, there are entire systems for if you want to set up trade routes and that's your interest is trucking across the entire map, you can do that and commodity prices vary throughout the game based on different things that happen. Um, there's a civil war that breaks out, which should, that is the best way to make money. You smuggle, <laughs> you smuggle luxury goods out of a local farm and you get them to the high-end restaurants in the capital city. Bank. Always bank. That's, I, was, I was taught that recently, and I think that's the strategy for, for buying the battleship, is sell truffles to rich people during war. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> um, so, there's, uh, but on, so on top of the actual trade aspect, if you see in the bottom right corner, that's the license plate menu. The license plates are essentially the collectibles that like signify the progress throughout the game. So there's some that are story related. There's some that you get for side missions. Um, there's some for if you <laughs> dig up every single fossil in the game and rebuild this museum that only takes you 300 hours to do and requires you to go across the entire map, there's a license plate for that. Um, what's also fun is that some of the license plates you can miss. So it's very easy to actually not have a complete license plate book, including they, that when you start the game, it asks you, do you want to play the tutorial? If you do not play the tutorial, you don't get the tutorial license plate, and then you will never complete your license plate plate guide. No one ever tells you that, unless to, and like I have to say, I I was like it was years after I had first gotten it, and I was like, oh, I guess I should play through the tutorial and see what it is, and then I find out, oh, there's a license plate. <laughs> Who would have thought? Um, and then on top of it, a big part of it is the music aspect. Um, it's really interesting because I can't think of another game that really does what they did, but you can, but there are so many different kinds of instruments and every single one of them has their own independent mini game. Um, I personally love the violin. I think that's the most fun and it's also, uh, I think, one of the easiest because you just need one analog stick to move it <laughs> where it needs to go. But you can see in these, oh, what is that, the saxophone? I hate the saxophone. You need, you need, you have to use, you have to use, I think it's, yeah, it's, Oh my god, you can see it's like you have the analog stick, you gotta use the left analog stick to go right and left, and then you got the right analog stick to do the bottom part of it. The organ is impossible because you have to actually play the notes. For some reason they made the piano and the organ like their own separate thing and you actually need to have an understanding of a piano <laughs> to ever get through any of them. They, they, they were the only instruments I could, ever, I could never play. But it's something that like I haven't like, 
I don't know how you touch the story and it's like this is hundreds of hours of content that you're able to go through with what's here. They've really built it to be this alternate history of early 20th century where you really get this interesting world of early robots and early machinery and you're in the middle of advancement and like technology but it feels like the world is living around you even though it's a PS2 game from 2005, 2006. Um, I mean, th I, there were images before of one of the robots flying. I mean, one of the things you can do is you discover flight. Like that's that that's a whole part of the game. And then you and then there's you there are specialized parts just for having a plane trot mobile and like you can really specialize in any way you want to do it. Which these images, which thank 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 God <laughs> to the very small Steambot uh, Discord because otherwise there are no images of anybody's real customization. Really, it's like if you look this up, you see a couple trot mobiles that uh, like IGN reviewers made because they were the only ones who ended up taking pictures and posting anything. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but the bottom right one has a yin yang license plate that was custom made in the game. It has a full pixel like editor, so you can build custom license plates. Yeah, I um, my my uh, goal for next year is I want to do a, a Trotmobile battle tournament with the game here, and I want to make a Magfest Trotmobile because you because like you can make the Magfest logo as a license plate, but you can really do anything with with a pixel art. And I wish there were more things like that because it's there's just so much. I mean, even the the uh, bunny ears have defensive stats, and there's something else it does for your Trotmobile, but. Um, and the, uh, the one on, on the bottom right, that one in the back is a flotation device, so it's actually built to, to, go, uh, to work better in water. Because there's, if you, um, also rich people love sharks, so you make a lot of money hunting sharks. You can also take those sharks and then attach them to your legs, and you make fin legs, which then cause you to go faster in the water. But what's interesting is that I think the developers meant to program it that when you're in a like deep body of water, like a lake or an ocean or something, uh, but it works in low streams. So remember how I said the everything is connected by waterways? So you just follow the waterways with these fin legs and you're in water that's maybe up to your ankles and you're just zooming across the entire map. And like, I was like, wow, this is the, this is the only way to play this game. Um, okay, so here we are to my favorite of being a stock baron. It's, there's a lot. There is, I, I remember I was, when I was, when I was growing up playing this, I was at my uh, grandparents' house and I was on the like family TV doing this and my grandfather comes in, he's like, oh, you're interested in the stock market? And I'm like, yeah, I'm making a fortune. And so I'm over here like profiteering off war and he's like, he, he, like, he like comes in with the newspaper and he's like, here's the stocks for the day, what do you think? And I'm like, oh, those are cool granddad. But <laughs> it's like, that's what so much of it was. And I mean, it's this this whole thing is its own is it needs its own presentation because you you there are, there are parts in the game where you can directly manipulate the different markets and there's like you should know when to buy and when to sell and there's like things where uh, different parts of the railroad need like expansion and materials and based on where you bring those raw materials from, the companies that make those raw materials will increase and the railroad will also increase. But what I always do is I wait for the railroad to crash because they get hit by bandits and nobody helps them. So you just let them simmer for a bit and let the stock price get below $100 and you buy up the whole company and then you help them and it shoots up to like $300 a share. <laughs> and that's, and that, and, and I mean, and that's pretty much the game. And it's like, and it even gets to points where like you get to work with one of the local newspapers and you can choose what ads to run in the newspapers. So there's like a failing iron mine company that if you then run the ads for, people will actually move to the iron mine, take over the abandoned buildings and actually rebuild the town. Did I mention this is from 2005, 2006? Like they were really, they were really doing a lot. Um, but unfortunately, uh, it did really badly. It, it was, like I said, yeah, like, like I said, nobody, nobody played it, nobody bought it. Um, I, I mean, this is, like, this is the ad. This is it, this is the marketing for Steambot Chronicles. And I mean, it, you know, it worked for me, but it didn't work for the, for the mass audiences. And like I said, it was almost a year to the day when this came out, uh, Persona 3 came out. And then when, when Persona 3 came out, Atlas exploded and they were able to do so much more after that. Um,
but uh, they honestly, I think it was bad luck. They um, when it when it came out, uh, Atlas like said Atlas wasn't big. Um, Irem, the company that actually was the developer, they made uh, Disaster Report, which was a natural disaster game, which uh, is going to tie into rather unfortunate luck for them. Um, they, but so that's what they made, and they made Steambot Chronicles. Um, they, when they released it, the PS2 was on the outs. Like the Xbox 360 was the new one. It's, I bring this up a lot, but this like announces like, oh, Halo 3 is going to be a thing. Ooh, look what the 360 can do. Like, um, you know, it's it's they were getting ready for something like that to come out. And when they were making the sequel for Steambot Chronicles, they had to focus on on building for a, for a PlayStation 3. They immediately had to upgrade all of their all of their systems, make sure that everything worked for a new for a new for a completely new console because they've been developing for PS2 the whole time. Um, but they didn't adopt an Xbox 360. It never got another port. It was only on PlayStation 2. Um, and like I said, there this was the competition when the game came out. Like it was, they it was really stacked against them. Um, you know, Halo became it is is what it is. And what, what I thought, what I found really interesting was that San Andreas came out at the same time. And there are things that San Andreas were not able to do that I was impressed the Steambot Chronicles could do. So I, you know, I feel like maybe they had focuses in different places, but I think that it's it's just surprising what it could do at the time. And actually this this has the strategy guide for Kingdom Hearts 2. So Kingdom Hearts 2 had all that was the competition at the same time when this came out. So it really didn't have much hope. Uh, which led to uh, this, where unfortunately the game is over $200 now, uh, which makes me really, really sad um, because it's really hard to play it. Um, I should also note for people that want to emulate it, it's really difficult because first off, you have to you have to get a controller because the you you, you control the mechs with the two analog sticks, so it's really difficult to try and map that to anything different that is not you know, a native PS2 controller. Um, it's also, they, I, I just recently, emulation has gotten better for it. It's one of those games that, that like people struggle. First off, I was surprised anybody was actually trying to emulate it. I was happy that was even happening, but there was a huge struggle where it, um, turns out the game wasn't optimized very well at all. <laughs> um, you don't really notice it on the PS2. There are definitely like slowdowns, but I kind of just chalked that up to being a game of the era, but, when you play it as an emulator, you see there's a lot of issues with their optimization. Um, and what really destroyed it was when the, um, when the tsunami hit uh, at a Fukushima and it took out the entire studio for Irem, destroyed everything. Um, and they had to cancel all their projects. So they canceled Steambot Chronicles 2, they canceled Disaster Report, which unfortunately was one of their main titles, but they're like, how do we release a disaster game now um, and then after that, uh, the company was sold off, and now they just make pachinko machines forever. Yeah, um, which is really, really sad. <laughs> um, what I, that will lead to the good news for what I really want to talk about is I'm trying to get more people interested in this game. It is something that I don't want it to be a $200 game. I want it to be something that people can actually play and enjoy without having to go through like these exorbitant prices to do so. Um, I and like so as I said before, I reached out to Tom Hullett, who was the guy who led the localization for uh, Steambot Chronicles in the United States, um, to ask him because in term like if, if you look up articles on Steambot Chronicles, there really isn't a whole lot. Like it's there was stuff at the Tokyo Game Show showing off Steambot Chronicles 2 which also didn't make any sense because the trailer for that was just a boss battle from the first game, but it was in the snow. <laughs> so, so I, but I, I guess, and it was a different main character, but it was literally just a boss battle from the first game. Um, and so I, I was trying to figure out like, you know, what happened? Why, do, why, did, why did it stop? And according to Tom, after the tsunami hit and it took out the studio, the IPs ended up in Japanese IP hell, which I've been trying to navigate Japanese law with no understanding of Japanese. It's a little bit difficult, <laughs> but um, I, I did enough digging and I found out that Irem does actually still exist. Uh, they were bought by a massive holding company 
And by digging through the holding company's directories, I found in this tiny little byline, Irem, <laughs> they still exist, and they have this really great website that has, their, that has all the developers' anime recommendations on it. <laughs> it's, it's, real, it's, really, it's really interesting. Uh, yeah, and it's, it's, and, but of course the whole thing's in Japanese, so I'm like using the Google Translate thing to try and get through it, and I find this one tiny like contact us form. And I'm like, oh, maybe there is a way to reach them. And what's, what's really interesting about them is that they have like their list of products and the games that they have, and they lost most of their IPs when everything got dissolved after, this, after the tsunami, so it doesn't list disaster report or anything else they did. But it lists Steambot Chronicles, which I thought was really interesting because they only make pachinko machines. Like that, that's all they do now. It, and it's, but that's like one of the only non you know, slot machine games that they have that's still listed on their website. So I tried to reach out. I got somebody to translate this whole email for me to send off to them. Um, but unfortunately, I haven't heard anything to the surprise of no one. I'm just cold calling a company in Japan. <laughs> but um, I, I, I'm trying to find out what happened to it. It sounded like, you know, digging through more interviews, there's a couple more in Japan where um, the people at IRAM say they want to do something with it. They just don't know what to do with it. And I don't think they have like a proper, like they, they don't have like a proper publishing team to re-release the game. Um, so, you know, what am I? I'm just a small studio here in Maryland, but I'm trying to see if there's any way we can contact them to see if there's something we can do with them to help bring it back. It's something that they're really like, you know, Armored Core just came out and it did super well. People want mech games. And it's, it's something like, something like this is so unique. I think you would capture so many different audiences that aren't expecting a really heart-wrenching story out of a mech game with stock market manipulation. But, <laughs> but it, it's, there's, there's just so much to it. And it's something that like, if you love, I, I mean, if you love these like deep stories, you love JRPGs, it, it, it has all of it. And you don't expect any of it, which I think makes it so interesting. Um, I, I wanted to show, an, of course we don't have audio for it, but like one of the big things I wanted to show was it's, a, it's how they tell the story is something I also haven't really seen done. I think like people try to tell stories through the world and it's hard because I'm not knocking Bethesda, I just think of Bethesda that you find a skeleton and there's like he's crushed by a rock and he's got a note next to him and you open the note and it's like, oh no, there's a rock. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's, it's just like, okay, well, I know the story, I, I, I get it. Um, but there's a, there's a whole thing where when you start the game and you, you wake up on a beach, you have amnesia, you have no idea where you are, and this girl named Connie finds you and you're trying to find a way off this beach after this, ironically, rock falls off a cliff and blocks the, the exit out. She goes into this cabin and picks up this picture which you don't have to investigate. You could just leave it there, but it's a picture of her and two other people that are unnamed, and they just leave it at that. For the, it's, it's not talked about. It's just she's really sad about something with that, and you have no idea. And they just kind of like allude to it throughout the entire game, and then you get to the main city. And if you go into that newspaper office where you can put job applications on one of the floors is an archive and if you click on every single newspaper box in there you will find a news article that mentions this this kid who was hit by a car because someone threw his book bag in the street and you find out that it was Connie who found her friend dying in the street and it's one of those things that is like I remember finding it and I was like, this is really important to the story. This is something that I think needs to be like addressed. Well, you know, it's, it's not a spoiler. It's something that, that like, you kind of need to know for, to understand the, the, the game. And, but they, once you find that, you then open up different dialogue trees with random people all over the game where you can then bring up this newspaper article and it actually tells you the story, which doesn't get revealed to you if you just play through the main story. <laughs> um, and, and like I said, it's, it's, that's why I want people to play this because there's so much here that I think is still, you know, no one knows about it. No one's, no one's discovered it. There's maps that don't have any purpose and no one knows what it is. I found uh, recently, it's a graveyard. Never seen this graveyard before. Has the name of one of the characters in the game in it. 
I don't know why. It's never mentioned in the story and it's never brought up, but it's, it's something that I just think anybody could sink hundreds of hours of this and you'd find something fun to do. Um, as I said, please play Steambot Chronicles. <laughs> please, please find any way to play Steambot Chronicles. Emulators exist for it now. For any standard PlayStation 2 emulator, you can play Steambot Chronicles now. The, the ISO exists. Um, definitely emulate it. Do not pay $200 for Steam Box Chronicles. <laughs> I, I am not selling my copy for $200. I, I could never part with it. Um, you know, and it's something where it's, it's a game that is so dear to my heart, and it makes me sad because after, after that happened, and I was like, oh, that's the end of Steam Box Chronicles, the IP did, like, the licenses kind of got floated around. They, the only game that came, they released a PSP like battle tournament that you could, that you could play. And it was literally just the multiplayer aspect of the first game, but it was a PSP and it wasn't even like online multiplayer. I was like, I was like, how, how does this work? Cause you can only play against AI. And then after that, they made a Blockus game. Like if you guys know Blockus, the, yeah, yeah. It, it's a Blockus game with the Steambot like Chronicles characters. I'm like, what, why? And it, it, has, it has nothing, but what's really strange about it is it has a story. It has a story and like cut scenes and there's a whole like, whoever made it really loves Steambot Chronicles <laughs> because like they like picked a specific inn in the capital city and built the whole thing around your playing Blockus against all of the characters in Steambot Chronicles. And, but that's the last thing that happened with it. And there's been nothing about it ever since and every, I feel like an article comes out every like five years about what's happened to Steambot Chronicles and what's going on with it, but no, no progress. Um, and I think it's just, it's one of those things that, you know, from, from my experiences in, in the video game industry, all the publishers want to be able to see, is there going to be a profit from this? What's the audience? Who can we point to? And that's always really hard because who do you, who do you really advert, like what is the mass audience you're advertising to for a game like this? Um, but it's something that, you know, when I show it to people, they're like, oh, I didn't know this game could do that. And I really think that if it worked on modern systems and got upgraded a bit, it would be widely accepted by people. Um, but as I said, I'm still trying to get a hold of anybody at Irem. Um, where I am personally, um, I was introduced Luck, <laughs> it was luck. I went to a wedding with my fiance and they sat me next to a guy in a Star Wars tie and he said, hey, do you know our cousin who runs video game events? And I was like, oh, a video game event. And he's like, I think it's called E3 or something. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. And so like night goes on and he drunkenly stumbles over and he says, hey, this, this is my cousin, Missy. And um, turns out she's the vice president of federal affairs for the Electronic Software Association. <laughs> and so she's, she's uh, shout out ESA, they're great, 10 out of 10 organization. They're really nice and they've, they've introduced us to so many awesome people, but they, they've, they've, she's been trying to help us find a publisher and make these connections. But one of the people she introduced me to was the guy who's responsible for the Kennedy Center, including video games as arts in their arts endowments. Um, and so I, I, I was talking to him about this and he was like, oh, I know somebody at Irem. I was like, you're the only one that does. And uh, so I'm meeting him Sunday. Fingers, fingers crossed. <laughs> so fingers, fingers crossed that happens. But um, like I said, I mean, you know, it's, it's an intro to maybe an Irem developer. Um, I will say also that if anybody has an interest in doing anything with this, um, I feel really bad asking my one friend who is stationed in Okinawa to translate my emails. Um, if anybody has an understanding of Japanese, I would love to get your contact info. I promise we don't have a lot to ask. It's just trying to send emails is really hard to Japan. Um, I'm happy to go into questions. I'd love to talk more about details in the game. Like I said, there's, there's a tremendous amount and I have played an obnoxious amount of hours of it, so I'm more than happy to talk about any part of it. Yes? I really commend your efforts in your research and um, <laughs> Thank you. how to do this. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, a question. Do you know if anyone's um, ever like live streaming or live capturing? Uh, yes. He's the only one. <laughs> He's the only one. Please, please, please subscribe to his YouTube channel. He is literally the only person who is putting out Steambot Chronicles content. And like, 
I learn things from him whenever he puts a new video up. There's a whole thing. There's a there's a back item you can put on your trot mobile that's called explosive. It it does it and it gives no explanation for how it works, what it is, what it does. But it turns out that if you stand still, push both the analog sticks together, the back opens up. And then if you press right trigger and left trigger, you shoot a barrage of missiles out of the back of you that home on lock into all of your opponents. That's no, that's, not, that's nowhere. <laughs> that's not the control scheme. Nothing. Wow. wow. I have a couple other questions. No, no, please, please. Um, do you know if they have a copy here? I... So I was going to, I, I was thinking about it. I don't know. I would be surprised if they did. But I could definitely say, I mean, from this attendance, I'm more than happy to bring it next year. I have my copy. It's in my PS2. I would love to do, like, like a MAGFest Trotmobile tournament. I mean, because you can, it, the multiplayer is great because you can just jump in, you have unlimited money, and you can pick whatever parts you want, whatever combo you want, and, like, we can set up, like, a MAGFest bot, and it can be, like, the boss for people to fight, like... Yeah, but I don't know if the console room has it because, like I said, it's two hundred is low end if you can find it. Um, yeah, it's, I think I would be interested also in like just hanging out and watching you walk through. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I absolutely love it. It's um, I, 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 I don't know. We've I, I we, we 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 run a, a Twitch channel for uh, our video game studio we've never had a whole lot of luck with it but I I, I, I would love to do Steambot Chronicles because nobody ever does it uh, uh, Dogwood Gaming if you look up Dogwood Gaming we're the only one <laughs> so but I'll definitely I mean I would love to do that and like I said it's always it's always interesting because I always find something I never expect and then I always end up down a rabbit hole of stock manipulations so that's like multiple <laughs> episodes right there w were there any more should I yeah. yes It's all voice. Wow. Yeah. So, so the the non-essential ones in the street, some of them are voiced, some of them are not. Okay. It depends, like, because there's a lot of um, man in green shirt, man in red shirt, and man in blue shirt don't have voice lines, but they'll change. They'll it, you'll you'll talk to them at the beginning, and man in blue shirt will say like, I really don't like man in red shirt. And then you go back in New Game Plus, and he's like, you know what, man in red shirt's actually pretty nice. <laughs> like, and, that's, and that's, but like, they don't have voices for that, but all the main characters do. All, um, it's just like the really minor ones that don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they adopt, like, there's a lot of things I think that they were testing in this that then got adopted into the later personas. Because um, I, I mean, there's a like in terms of like the dialogue and relationships, it's 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 pretty extensive with the main characters. Oh, okay. I, I, I mean, it, it would allow for it because it's one of those things that you can take the Trotmobiles you made in the story mode and you can upload them and then you can use them in the multiplayer fights. So, like, I'm sure if somebody did that, that would actually be great because you could upload your single player ones if you wanted to. Um, it's one of those, I would say that there could be, but nobody plays the game, so there's no, so I don't think anybody's ever tried. Yes. Oh yeah. So many aspects of things that random people will pick up random stuff and be like, oh, okay. But someone could just go on like, okay, this is my stock mobile for the night. Oh, this is my book yep. bag. You, they could maybe do a little commitment of their own and, and without having to say update it to the PS3 or anything like that. Is that something they would want to suggest, or is that going to be something that they just kind of do? I think that like doing a. A, a port would be ideal. I just, they, I know they don't have the source code anymore. That's the biggest thing is that all got destroyed in the tsunami. And I know they, they said they have, 
in their words, the important bits. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I think the only thing that you really couldn't rebuild is the voices, um, because, I, I mean, a lot of them are, like, music's great in this game. <laughs> I wish we had audio, because it's, it's really incredible. But they, they have, like, there's the band you're with, there's a vocalist. They have songs that they custom made for this game. There's, like, six of them that she sings, and, like, that's stuff that I don't think you'd be able to replace now. But... Like, that's what I would like to do. I would like to be able to just be like, hey, here's the game, here's what it was, and then put it on Steam. It's just, you would, I think you'd have to rebuild a lot of it because they don't have like the assets or things like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually an interesting point. I, um, funny enough, I use laser discs for a lot of the <laughs> for, for for like taking audio from it. So I like I'm sure you could because I'm sure the uh, the CD quality is up there. Um, that's a good idea. I, I and and it's it's my big thing is that I'm very fortunate that I've met a lot of game developers coming to Magfest. Honestly, there are a bunch of people who I work with who I met coming here. And it's like. I would have no issue having a staff of 20 people put the game on Steam. Like, we have the ability to do it. I think it's just a matter of getting a hold of them. Because, you know, I, I mean, it's also like, who knows how many people have even ever been like, hey, what happened to Steambot Chronicles? I'm sure there aren't very many people reaching out to them. Yes. Is there one? I, I didn't know. What? No. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. Oh, my God. And then the hot chocolate. I, okay, one, one that's, a, that's, a, that's a deep cut, and I'm really surprised you mentioned that. <laughs> so I, I, I wasn't. Uh, um, okay, so, so if you, there are. Um, you can romance three of the people in the game. When I say romance, this is a, like, teen is a strong rating. It's like E10. They say, they say one bad word, I think, once in the story. Um, but the, the, you, like, can invite these, these girls over, and you can, like, play music and talk with them, and they're like, oh, your apartment's nice if you filled it with stolen artifacts that should be in a museum. <laughs> or, if you're like, or if you're like me, who's just like, I need, I need a place to sleep, and it's got, like, a bed I found, a dumpster. And she's like, what, you live like this? <laughs> But they all and, and like and, 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 and they all have comments on these things, but if you like but if the date goes well, for some reason the max heart thing you can do is say, Can you please clean my ears? And like and like you lay you lay on their lap and they're just like cleaning your ears, having a and you keep having a conversation with them, and the last thing you do is you say, Do you want hot chocolate? And then it goes to a black screen and they say, Mmm, that's good. And that's the that's the whole thing. That's the that's so funny. I didn't. I. I didn't even think about that. But yes. Yeah. And and so that's it. That's as raunchy as Steambot Chronicles gets. <laughs> So there, it was. They had they had removed it in uh, in the, the 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 final releases. But people that had the PC, it was PC version. I think they found that there was or like PS2. Yeah, there was there there was stuff left over from development, and there had been a mini game for doing stuff with your partners in San Andreas and that was left in there and it was called hot coffee because they the um they your they would invite you in for hot coffee yeah so hot coffee hot chocolate yeah <laughs> yes has the had the coffee yeah coffee. yeah <laughs> So the first thing I gotta say is that that is a direct line from here. <laughs> yeah, that was. I was looking for for a title. I looked at this and I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. Um, so thank you, Hardcore Gamer Magazine, uh, June 2006. Um, but uh, it's it's the story. It, it it is because you don't expect it. It's 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 something that you're like, 
oh, this is nice. Oh, I'm joining a band. Oh, I'm finding out who I am and what happened to me. And then, oh, God, this guy has a gun. Like, it, like it, really, it really takes a very drastic turn in a way that, and, like, I don't want to spoil the game, but it's just, it gets, it's, it's a very emotional game that touches on a lot of subjects that you don't really expect it to. Um, and a lot of the characters become far more deep and, like, there's a lot more to them than you originally expect. Um, you know, uh, there's this one band member who you're with, his name's Basil, and he's like uh, this immature dude whose his bass is larger than him, but like he's got a good heart and he does his best. Um, he's the guy who whenever something goes wrong, it's because his trotmobile got broken or it was beaten up or, you know. But he has a whole thing where like, he tries so like he tries so hard and he has this entire like you know upbeat personality the whole game and you 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 see it progress as the game goes on that's something that i don't feel like you really got from games of that time and it's like you know as soon as you said you know what like gilly movies first thing is like oh god i mean the story's just as sad so it's like that's me i i think it's the writing i think it's the writing and the characters beyond just like the world and the art i mean it's you know it's very like whimsical but i think it's far more the story than anything else any other questions yeah No, it's, it's, well, so it's really, it's funny you mention that, because yes, there's a whole separate thing where, this is one of my favorite side missions, and if you get, and if you do listen to me and, and go play Steambot Chronicles, the, 100%, there's, when you can go in the water, there's a village called Mem Village, it's spelled like meme, it took me forever not to call it meme village, but it, it's, it's a, it's a town that they don't have a railroad, they're completely cut off from the world, and they don't know what tropmobiles are. So, like, you're the one who first introduces this technology, and, like, the town mayor is like, I want a railroad to our town, and so you gotta go the station master and say, I want a railroad, but make sure you buy the stock first because the prices go up with the new line. And then, and so you like build this whole train line to Mem Village and they do, and then they have your band come in on the train and you play a whole performance for them. But what happens is the mayor discover, so they all lived in a communal house. There were no walls. They each had like their own sections for beds, but it was like a communal like village essentially. The mayor found in his quarter truffles were growing in the back. So when you come back after the rail line's done, he's built walls in the communal hut, blocking him off from the rest. His house is gorgeous, full of all these things. And he's like, I've discovered we have these rare mushrooms that you city folk like. And then he sells them to you for pennies. And yes, it is a complete, and, and I think it's, it's, it's hilarious that the best thing you can do with them is you wait for war to break out and then go to all the high-end hotel restaurants and they pay you a fortune. It, there's a lot of tongue in cheek in this game for a lot of it, and it's um, <laughs> there's just a lot. There, there's, it's I feel like they cover a lot of subjects that for 2006 a lot of people were too afraid to ever get near, but it makes the game really interesting. Yes. That commentary it reminds me of some of the themes I've seen in uh, Miyazaki writing, also. Like yeah, and I mean, there's a lot of like I mean every. One of the things I also really loved and I tried to adopt in, um, so the first game that I ever made was an old school JRPG, and I tried to design a lot of my side quests around how Steambot Chronicles did them, because they would do these multi-step quests where you would run into the same person at different points throughout the game. I mentioned the artist. Um, that is also a 10 out of 10 side mission, one of the best storylines I've ever played in a game. You meet this guy named Pablo, who's, who's selling his artwork to afford food in the first city in the game. And if you buy his artwork, he's super happy about it. And when you get the ability to start transporting passengers with the bus attachment, he's your first passenger. And everywhere you take him, he paints the locations that you've taken him to. And he, his, his story continues, and you, and, you, and you take him to the capital city, and then you talk to the college, and they're like, our art professor's a drunk. Go find us a new one. Then you go find Pablo. And, and like, that, that, that kind of progression with these side characters is, I think, truly makes this so special. Because all these things just happen... As you're going through the main storyline, you're like, oh yeah, I just helped Pablo become an art professor, and he's got a whole class that like has all dialogue about him now. So, 
It's not a happy ending. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> but, no, exactly. Uh, was there anything else? I mean, if you were to just blow through it, you could probably do it in 60 to 80, maybe, but you'd have a really hard time. It's, it's, it's one of those things where there's, there's no levels. Everything is based on the parts you have on your mech. So if you don't go and do side things, go explore, find different parts, it's really hard. Like there's like, you, at the midway point of the game is a giant like robot uh, tournament match. And, uh, you go in, nobody tells you when you enter the city, so if you're not prepared, you're just stuck. Um, and right before it, you, go, you end up going on the boat that you crashed originally at the beginning of the game, and in there is a chest with a trident arm piece, which is one of the best arm pieces in the game. And if you don't grab it, you just don't have it, and you have to go into one of the hardest fights in the game without it. And so it's one of those things that, like, I tell people, it's like, if you just blow through it, it's no problem, but then they end up being like, oh, I lost. Uh, that's another big thing I want to mention. Most of the battles, you can actually lose them, and it's canonical what happens based on that. Um, so, like, there's entire thing. Like, you'll get an entirely different ending. You get an entirely different ending if you lose any of the boss fights in the boss rush. So it's yeah. There's there there's just a lot. All the grinding. I, I mean, all the grinding. Yeah, no, you're like encouraged to go all, all over the map and there's all these, like, I mean, the only grinding I've ever really done, I can tell you, is, for, is to try and fill out this stupid museum. I have never finished the museum side quest because you've got to go all over the map, mine all these random, like, nodes, and then there's also all these dungeons that can have loot randomly dropped throughout three different ones. You have to get all of them to finish the museum. That's the only grinding and I've never been able to finish it. So when you say how long would it take to 100% it, a thousand plus. I mean, I'm still trying. I haven't gotten there yet. Yes. Oh, did they? Which one? Oh, did they really? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I remember when um, when the first Yakuza game came out. That was the only one that had an English dub, and they and they and I don't think they ever tried to do that ever again after that. Do they really? I think I had an English dub. I'll have to go. Huh. Unfortunately, I I do think that it's like. You know, I do wonder if they have the the Japanese audio for it, um, because. But I also wonder maybe they have the U.S. the English one because maybe that wasn't in their studio when the tsunami hit. I don't really know, um, and and it just unfortunately because it's a music game, I think it's one of those things that would suffer if they didn't have any of their, you know, original voice acting. But there has to be like I, I'm I that's interesting because maybe they do have like just the Japanese one or just the English one is somewhere. Yes. When you were mentioning all the nodes and maps and that sort of thing, so what you got to do is when you destroy it, you got to <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you. You tell, for the sake of it, you tell all the people who are done with the boss battles and you kind of manage to go through, hey, there's gathering stuff over there. Half of them are on the track of these gathering them so we can just, <laughs> oh, just to do this part. <laughs> well, it, it, it's like, I mean, it's... You know, it's, so the, I can tell you the reason why it is such a nightmare is because you have to mine fossils. And the fossils, you can only hold three at a time if you have the highest level flatbed on the back of your Trotmobile. It, you have then have to take it to the museum for them to clean the fossils. So if you're going from the fossil valley, that's one loading screen. If you're coming from the other place where the fossil is, it is 16 loading screens and two train rides <laughs> to, clean, to clean three fossils. Uh, no, they uh, take up the entire back inventory of your Trotmobile, so you can't do anything else, including if you wanted to transport passengers, you can't because you'd have to throw away all of your fossils to change out the back part. 
Yeah, yeah, it's but the nice thing is for the dungeon where you got to find stuff in there. Those aren't fossils. So you can put them in your pockets. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you all so much for being here. This really means a lot to me. And please, please, please play Steambot Chronicles.